Hello YouTube, I'm Vince White. I'm an employment attorney. On this channel, we answer publicly posted questions from YouTube users getting folks the answer they need from an employment attorney. We have a question here from YouTube user PlantMom1. PlantMom1, I hope you're getting your seed starts in as it is March here. And, and, well, I guess it depends on what zone you're in, but I'm sure you're a good plant mom. Um, Plant Mom 1 asked us, do lawsuits against city, state, and federal government typically drag on longer than lawsuits against regular old corporate America? Quick answer, yes, um, but I'll extrapolate a little bit. So first and foremost, when you're suing the federal government, they have their own system. If you're suing them for discrimination or sexual harassment, Federal employees have to go through kind of an EEOC process. They, they do have some access to federal court as well. Uh, but generally speaking, it is much more time consuming. It is much more labor for the attorneys involved. There's a lot more risk. There's a, there's a lot of things going on. Um, I always recommend people follow the Fight Employment Discrimination channel. I believe that's the correct name of the channel. Uh, because she did an amazing job fighting her claims against NASA as a federal employee. And a lot of what she shares really highlights kind of the extra obstacles and hoops to jump through that federal employees have to face. Um, it can be disheartening as a federal employee. It, it's still worth it. I'm not saying it's not worth it. I'm just saying it can be disheartening and how difficult that can be. Now, when you're fighting a discrimination or sexual harassment claim against a city government or a state government, it still takes longer. Generally, you're going to have access to the full gamut of laws, um, or at least most of the laws. But part of the issue is that you're fighting against an entity who does not fear losing money because it would not be losing its money. It would be losing your money, right? It, they're just going to pay you with tax dollars. So they don't generally care as much, and that can make their stances on settlement kind of humorous, like... Uh, yeah, we don't know if we care. We don't think we're going to lose. But if we do lose, uh, it's not my money. Right? It's it's always interesting when none of the decision makers care about the result. These cases can get protracted at, in those situations. Now, it's also worth noting they often get free representation. Not all of them. A lot of the city governments don't. They have to go hire counsel. But a lot of state governments are going to get free representation in the sense that they have people on staff who are dedicated to fighting these claims. And those people don't get paid more if they fight more claims, right? It's the same cost for the employer either way. So um, they'll often just fight things to fight. You'll see sometimes cases where um, people in power don't settle a case because they're not going to be in power next year. So they don't care about that case. They just fight it and drag it out and figure somebody else to deal with it in the future, right? That's always incredibly frustrating. Um, and let's be kind of frank about it. They're, they're also not working with the best attorneys a lot of the time. Like um, the New York City attorneys in special fed, they're good. They're not horrible. Um, but they wouldn't be working in special fed if they could have a big law job, you know, I mean, special fed, like they're, it's like a rat warren in there. Like their, their offices are stacked to the ceiling with case files. Um, their caseloads are absurdly high. And, uh, I mean, from what I understand from them, they have serious pest problems in their offices. Um, I've never seen it. I've been in their offices. I've never seen the pests, but there's some issues with rodents and, and, and whatnot, and, and they're worried about bringing in their, like, their bags and their jackets because, you know, like, maybe cockroaches can get them and stuff like that. And that's, that's kind of a terrible environment to work in, right? And, and I share this not to mock them because some of them are very good attorneys, and I'm, you know, I'm friends with some of them. Um, but do you think they would work there if they could work somewhere else that was clean and paid them better? Probably not. Probably not. I'm just going to say it. Probably they probably they wouldn't be there, right? So, and, and listen, some of them, I think, could jump. But, you know, some. it's it's worth noting that it's very difficult to fire an attorney who works for New York City. It's very incredibly hard. Um, 
and, and you know that has some value to certain people to be safe to have a stable gig i mean that has some value but it's probably not the recipe for like the best employment defense attorney and when you don't have the best employment defense attorney and that attorney is not really incentivized to get better results or to make like decisions that ma- like there's no there's no penalty for a new york city employment defense attorney that takes a big verdict against the city like uh oh the city paid five million dollars uh oh they still go to work tomorrow they don't no one screams at them you know it's just it's just just is what it is right and so there's less dynamism they're a little less likely to make the hard choices like hey we got to get this settled right now um and and the last thing i'll note and, and, and just to be clear i'm not saying those attorneys are bad i think those attorneys aren't the best attorneys right and they're not incentivized to get case, to get cases knocked out it's really just not something they worry about um the last thing i'll say is a lot of state and city agencies and certainly the federal government don't care about bad press like at all like if you bring a case against the mta and you do press on it they're like yeah people already hate us like everybody knows we don't do our jobs well we're hiding hundreds of millions of dollars in corrupt money allegedly allegedly right um like if you if you brought a claim against de blasio's government when he was in power here in new york and you were like well i'm gonna do press on this i'm pretty sure de blasio didn't like listen right now there's a story running about how my wife misplaced a billion dollars of, of aid money so please do some press like if you could interrupt that news cycle and the constant news cycle about the federal about the fbi investigating me for corruption i would enjoy that let's go with a classic discrimination claim that would be a welcome interruption to our news cycle right um which some things don't really change that much as i understand it there's a lot of uh campaign finance investigations going on of our current of new york city's current neighbor not not current mayor not my mayor i'm i'm out i'm just here packing up my apartment um for campaign finance issues right so so it's not um it's not like they're that worried about this like it's these claims are often a blip on the radar for them and the only time it really gets traction is if somebody gets killed sometimes so we can do press we can put pressure but it's the the recipients of that pressure don't feel the pressure in the same way they don't go to dinner parties and have their you know acquaintances say i read that your company did something really terrific right instead i mean they go to dinner parties and their their acquaintances say oh yeah you work for the mta i i hate the mta you you ruin my life every week you do something ridiculous and the people who work in the mta are like right totally we're horrible (laughs) and it just is what it is right um so context matters in terms of that uh plant mom one i hope this helps in some way if it did like subscribe comment down below share the channel so it can grow we're on the quest to 100k subs very excited about that take care